I ran out of toothpaste two days ago, and I still haven't gotten more. Hooray, it's everybody's favorite kind of video, the getting into the weeds of the cognitive functions, which some of you Myers-Briggs people don't even understand. Yay, hooray, we're doing it, guys. Today we're going to talk about what is it like to have extroverted sensing as your inferior function, and this is what INFJs and INTJs have as, as the inferior. It's the thing that that is really tripping them up in life. And here's something I've realized going as we're talking about this. Everyone has basically all the same problems in life. It's not like because you're a specific type, you don't have problems with one area or another. It's not like just because you, if you're SE dominant, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have problems relating to that. But what it means is your inferior function, that's where the problems are going to come up that you didn't see coming. And it's going to be the ones that you're like afraid of the most. That, and those are the ones that are going to keep you up at night. So first of all, quick refresher, extroverted sensing is basically just the real physical world. It's what you perceive in the moment right now. That's all it is. It's also a gathering function, so it's taking in new information. So being the inferior function for the, the INFJ, INTJ, that means that the lead function, NI, is kind of the opposite. It's not about the real world. It's all about, uh, you know, this dreamland, this fantasy world in your head where you're, you're trying to see possibilities. You're going really deeply into concepts and the abstract and disrespecting the real world happening around us. The reason I started thinking about this today is because it seems to me like, why can't I get anything done in life? Oh, maybe it's because I... I disrespect the real world around me and I'm spending too much darn time in my head. Earlier today, I was trying to sell a watch on eBay and it was it has taken me a long time just to get started with it because I've for a long time I've like known that I wanted to sell it. And uh, the thing is though, I don't sell on eBay all the time. So it was like, oh crap, now I'm going to have to like do research, I'm gonna have to learn, I'm gonna have to like refresh my memory, learn new things on how to do this. I'm gonna have to, to look up, oh, what did other people sell this watch for? How much money can I get for it? Oh crap, that, now I'm gonna have to list this thing, I'm gonna have to get it out, and oh crap, where's the box? Oh, there it is, oh no, no, I can't find the instructions. Oh, where have I put everything? No, now I have to take a picture, uh, the lighting, uh, the background. I've got to get a tablecloth out to underlie everything, you know, for a background. Oh, crap, the tablecloth has creases in it. Now I need to iron it out. Uh, so it took a lot. Anyone would have to deal with that. Anyone who wants to sell something on eBay who doesn't normally do it, they would have to, like, first figure out how to do it. And they would, you know, go through all the same issues, but... For someone with extroverted sensing last, it is like you are afraid to even get started because you don't want to open the Pandora's box of all the new stuff that you're going to have to face. All this, because you know, it's like you know, even though I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, I knew that as I go down this road of, you know, trying to take pictures, that there was going to be some stupid thing I would get, I'm, that's going to distract me. I knew, even though I didn't know exactly what it was, I knew that something like having to iron the background was going to happen. And I, was, I had this like fear of it because you, who knows how many other things are going to spread from that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe it's just the one thing. Maybe it's just the ironing. But maybe from there it could be like, all this other stuff, the iron's broken, the, you know, the electricity bill hasn't been paid. <laughs> Not that extreme, but it can get that extreme, man. Or, you know, you know your toothpaste has been running out, but it still seems like a surprise when you go back for the second day in a row and there's no toothpaste and you're like, oh yeah, I guess I need some more. While we're here, why don't we stop for a commercial break? Come on down to the shopping park for our weekly special on toothpaste. For two tubes, only 222. 
Thank you very much for sitting through that. And it, it causes me to never want to start anything because I know that almost anything I do is going to have these unexpected detours of stupid little crap that I have to take care of. And the, real, the problem is I am discovering as I have matured uh, that life... Life is all just a bunch of stupid little things, one after the other. As Winston Churchill said about history, and as Eckhart Tolle likes to quote him, it's just one damn thing after another. Uh, that's really what life feels like <laughs> when you have extroverted sensing last. And someone who has lead extroverted sensing, yeah, sure, life is one thing after another, but they can handle it. They're like, sure, they're like a, they're like a, baseball catcher and they've got the mitt and they're like sure new thing new thing new thing I don't care whatever I'll deal with it um their problem is going to be at the end of the day they'll be like what am I doing what what does this all mean uh you know but for uh for uh, an IN an INF or INTJ they're gonna know what the meaning is they're just not gonna be able to handle the baseballs being thrown at them. They're like someone behind home plate with a bare hand, and they're like getting out of the way as Max Scherzer throws a 95 mile an hour fastball at them. That's what it's like. And you're scared because you know another one's coming. And then as soon as you get the mitt, and this is an extended baseball metaphor warning, as soon as you get the mitt and you're like, okay, I can catch a fastball, all of a sudden he throws a curveball. And you're like, oh crap, what is that? What am I looking at? I F if I know. And so in, in everyday life, it's sort of like I have this idea of what I want to do with my life and of where it's heading. And unfortunately, I have to do things like get the oil changed on the car. And I have to, you know, buy toothpaste and I have to go to the doctor. And then, but then it's not that simple. And that's, that's where the fear comes in is you know it's never that simple. You know it's never just getting oil change. Because you, we often have a tendency to ignore the things that are piling up. It's like, okay, whatever, there's a noise in the car. Maybe you don't even hear it. Or maybe you hear it and you're like, ah, whatever. So that when you finally get faced with these things, they've been piling up. And so it, it, you take the car to get an oil change and they're like, oh, a squirrel has made a nest in the, in the engine. Or it's like, oh, actually, you need, to, you need a new uh, everything. That, that'll be $2,000, please. Let me tell you, I got a new car in December, and it has been the biggest relief ever that I don't have to worry about it breaking down. Like, it is, it is, it has been heavenly. From there, it's like, you know, it's not just going to be going to the doctor. You know the doctor's going to say, oh, your cholesterol, and you're going to be like, oh, crap, and then you get your cholesterol under control, and then you go to the dentist, and he's like, oh, your tooth, it's got a cavity, and you're like, crap, what a... Maybe I should have gotten that toothpaste a few days earlier and not let it go, go so long. And you start to get this feeling like you're trapped by all these stupid things. And your life is just, is going to be, the life is getting strangled out of you from this, the one stupid thing after another. And it's like, please, somebody, just take care of the stupid crap for me. Just like, let me focus on my, my big plans and my big, you know, philosophical musings. Let me, f let me focus on that crap and all the jokers around me can worry about, you know, whether or not there's toothpaste in the house because it's frightening to have to face that. It's frightening to have to be like, oh man, I've got to be ready for anything coming and I've got to like keep an eye out. I've got to be vigilant. And you know what the big irony is? The big irony is that I consider myself to be detail oriented. You know, I'm not, I would never call myself like, I don't even, what's the opposite of detail oriented? Detail not oriented? Disoriented? Like, I can pick a typo out better than anyone. I am a typo spotting monkey fudger. I can spot inconsistencies. I spot detail issues. Maybe it's also a thing like when it's your inferior, you feel really proud of being able to pick out that stuff and you're like, I caught you. I caught you on that. I caught a detail. 
Maybe it's also because you're so afraid of it, you like become hypersensitive to it all, uh, especially when it's other people's lives. You're like, hey, hey, Joker, I see that you you're missing a detail. Yeah. Meanwhile, someone pointed out in my <laughs> video the other day, the love languages video that I spelled it in the in the hashtag Lanugages or something. So it goes to show you how detail oriented I am. All right, so here's something else that I'm wondering about. You tell me what you think about it. But when someone has a major revelation in their life about like what life is really about or how to find happiness and all that stuff, uh, maybe it's related to what their inferior function is. It's like, oh, I figured out life. And so I wonder if, I don't know, like I haven't typed Eckhart but I wonder if he's like an IJ, like an INFJ, INTJ, something like that. Because his key to life is just be in the present moment all the time and don't think, you know? <laughs> so it makes me wonder if that aha moment for him was like, oh, I've been ignoring extroverted sensing all these years. And that's the, that's the point of life. Now, I know a lot of you have asked, like, how, how do we get better at this extroverted sensing thing? And I'm not really, I'm not the best person to give out life advice here, but I would say that it really comes down to just really disciplining yourself and uh, finding, finding ways to be more in the present moment. But it's not just, not just be in the present moment, but figure out how to handle your life in a way where you're not afraid of things breaking down all the time, you know. And so that means not disrespecting things as they come up and to try to be ever more vigilant to be on top of the things breaking down in your life around you. So, you know, buying that toothpaste, making sure that your car is, you're keeping up with the maintenance on it. Um, I mean, this sounds really boring, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> And it should. It should sound boring. Uh, if it's your inferior function, it's going to sound like the last thing you ever want to do is to be um, on top of the, the stupid, all the little stupid things in life. And you know you have to do it. And you probably are in a state of like low level anxiety all the time because of all the things in your life that you know you have to do. And, you're, and you know that you have been kind of neglecting it and that it's going to blow up on you sooner or later. You know, this suddenly my mind went somewhere and I'm just going to go there even though this video has gone on a bit. This can even manifest itself in relationships where um, I'm going to make a whole nother video about it, I think. But you start to have this fear in relationships that there's something that's going to blow up that you don't and you don't understand where it's going to come from. You don't know what's going on. Over at Objective Personality, aka Dave Superpowers, they talk about the missing information. That's like the INFJ's biggest fear and INTJ. Uh, C.S. Joseph talks about how INFJs are really all about loyalty and then they get paranoid that the people around them aren't loyal. I think it comes from this. I'm not sure if he explains it this way, but I think it comes from f feeling like there's some information or lots of information missing that um, you're kind of just like waiting for this curveball to come out and it makes, <laughs> it makes you not want to trust people because you, you feel like they are going to be like everything else in your life where all these little stupid details are going to come up it ultimately is either in your imagination because you're so used to things blowing up on you or it's your fault because you're ignoring things and there's been all, you know, things cropping up and you've just chosen to ignore it, not tend to it. So that's extroverted sensing as the inferior function. It's, it's amazing. It's great. I recommend it for everyone. Go out today and get your inferior extroverted sensing only $99.99. And that's only in Bitcoin. I don't even know how much Bitcoin is worth. Switching topics, I almost did this today. I almost made a video where I'm going to try to type Sir Paul, Sir Paul McCartney, using the objective personality method. Now, I held off on it because I'm like, you know, I'm not really sure. I'd like to feel a little bit more confident about this. I'd like to try to disprove what 
the the thing I've come to right now because right now I'm uh, I'm unsure. It's between two types. Plus, he's really hard to type because he is a PR master who I don't even know if he's ever his real self in interviews. But he has a lot of interviews, so I'm trying to catch him, you know, just for a minute. See see where his brain goes. So since I ha- I'm not doing it today, if you are in uh, the objective personality class or if you've watched Dave Superpowers and you kind of know what's going on with that and you want to get the checklist on their website, I think you can get the checklist there. It would be cool if you all, uh, all separately from me, tried to type Paul and then when I make that video, you know, which will happen fairly soon, maybe maybe my very next video, then, uh, you know, we can compare notes. You can tell me what you got. This is sort of like the, the partner system that they recommend, except this will be a bit more open. Anyone can be my partner in this, and then we can uh, critique each other, see where we went wrong, because it's probably going to be a disaster, and I'm going to make a fool of myself. But I got to try. This is sort of my thing, is thinking I've mastered something in two months that took other people years to do. Those chumps, how could they not get it as fast as I can? (laughs) And as soon as I get some knowledge, I need to use it. So that's about it from me. (laughs) Thanks for watching. Give it a like. And that's about it from me. (laughs) Bye.